Get ready to be inspired by the people, stories, and opportunities in Africa. We're a global community of Africans and friends of Africa with no boundaries. Together, we celebrate the continent's successes and help provide solutions to some of its greatest challenges. Impact Africa airs live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. GMT at listenvisionlive.com. You can also catch previous episodes on iTunes and on the show's website, impactafricaonline.com. Connect with Impact Africa on Twitter and Facebook at UImpactAfrica. Together, we'll discover that the real Africa is full of amazing talents and great opportunities. Support for Impact Africa comes from our financial coach, Ranked among America's 11 best financial coaches on the web at ourfinancialcoach.com. United Four Kids Foundation, committed to healing the world one child at a time. On the web at unitedforkidsfoundation.org. Frad Consulting, planning and designing services where you are always in good company. On the web at fradconsulting.com. And from Outside in HR. Pointing great companies to the future of successful HR on the web at outsideinhrng.com. And from Wiser Advisory, Africa's leading financial advisory, training and outsourcing services firm on the web at wiseradvisory.com. And from Nextier, the leading public sector advisory firm focused on agriculture, power, and petroleum on the web at nextyearlimited.com and from Data Century Limited and from Total Ascent, empowering individuals and organizations to achieve their educational and career goals on the web at total-ascent.com and from Brave Little Heroes, helping kids discover their inner awesome on the web at bravelittleheroes.com. To support Impact Africa, please visit our website, impactafricaonline.com. Welcome to Impact Africa. Africa has long been associated with needing aid and handouts. Today, you'll learn so much more about this wonderful continent from enlightening stories, people, and ideas. Now, here is your host, Tope Fajin Basi. Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Africa, and welcome to Impact Africa. It's really a pleasure to be back here again today. And today we're going to talk about something um, really challenging, and I'll be talking to guests who are doing something to change and to make that challenge better for the continent of Africa. My first guest today is Orolua Shomolu. She's the Executive Director of the Women's Technology Empowerment Center a Nigerian non-governmental organization working to empower girls and women through ICT. Orolua, welcome to Impact Africa. Hey, Tokwe, hi. Very, very nice to hear you loud and clear from Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> you I'm glad. That this was not going to work, but it's looking uh, good so far. 
Yes, maybe because it's a Sunday. Who knows? You know what? <laughs> We're just going to, you know, keep going at this. But all right, it's really um, a delight to have you on the show. And it was a pleasure to meet you in Lagos last month. Because I think yes. you're doing something really, really fantastic. When it comes to technology, not only is Africa behind, but women globally are behind. What sparked yeah. your interest in ICT for women? Well, uh, my interest, it's, it stemmed from my own personal experiences. Um, after um, secondary school, while I was waiting for my jam results to come out, I went to a computer school. And that was the first time I really got um, a, a good idea how useful computers could be, you know, for everyday life. Um, I did a diploma in computer programming. And after that, I just, you know, started practicing. And I wrote programs for small businesses. Um, and I, I saw the real-life applications. Then when I went to university, I set up a business typing um, essays and assignments for other students. Wow. And even though it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And even though it was such a simple skill, I mean, there was obviously a demand for it because I had students pouring in, you know, asking me to type up their assignments and I was making money from it. And I was making money from like the comfort of my room. And I just thought that, you know, that this is um, something that is very important, especially for women to know. I've always been very um, um, passionate about women and women living empowered lives. So I really, really wanted to... Um, to talk to women and get them, you know, on board with using technology. And then when I started my master's, I realized through research, you know, and all the different classes I was doing that, you know, women were really um, not participating in technology, whether that's um, working or developing, you know, new tools or within like technology policy. There was just such a dearth of women. So that was really what got my interest. And I decided that I was going to work in that area. And, you know, I really agree with you. And this is perhaps what Africa needs the most. People who see a problem and who see a way to, you know, a way out of that problem instead of just complaining. You know, and I have some pictures showing of some of the work you're doing at WTech. But, you know, I want to, to buttress your point about women and um, ICT. I was reading um, a study that there's an increasing trend of African women who are studying computer science and those related fields in the university. However, it's, you know, more and more we're seeing more of those women dropping out of the field, yeah. dropping yeah. out of, the, of their careers because they're seen as a male-dominated field. In fact, yeah. I, I understand that um, I think there was a Google developer group for women created in Ghana and mm -hmm. about two years ago. And the organizers actually came under attack from some of the men saying that, you know, who, why do you need a women only group? And yeah. one of the guys said, oh, leave them alone. Maybe they want to create apps about menstrual periods together. Is there really a gender bias here or is there a cultural issue that is holding women back from succeeding even after studying? It's very, it's very interesting that you mentioned that because that dropping out of women um, in computer science um, um, careers is prevalent like all across the world. It's not just, you know, an African thing. I know even in the U.S. it's also a big issue. I think, um, number one, I mean, if you get women going to study computer science, I mean, that's fantastic. I find that a lot of the girls who I work with through our technology camps, you know, may not even consider careers in computer science um, or computer engineering because they don't know many women working in this field. So there's a lack of mentorship. There's a lack of role models. So they just assume that because, you know, most of the people they know working, you know, within the um, uh, technology space are men, then it must be um, a, a, a career that is just somehow better you know suited to men of course there's um there are long hours involved especially if you work in the area of software development but i think that you know there are different types of positions within um the technology space so i think that um there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of misconceptions about what the jobs you know are really like um, there's also misconceptions that, you know, you have to be uh, very antisocial and you do a lot of work <laughs> by yourself. 
And, you know, there are lots of women who are, you know, very social and they like to, you know, work in teams. But the thing is that, you know, there's a lot of technology work that requires working, you know, in groups or in teams. So, I mean, I think that um, it's the real, the reality of the work is different from what people tend to think it is, you know, maybe perpetuated by popular culture and films, you know, you see computer scientists and, you know, they're just loners, but it's really not like that. So one thing that we try to do is, you know, we get women who are actually working, you know, in the technology space, come and talk to um, the girls that we work with and let them know what their work is really like. So they see that, okay, they're working on useful tools. You mentioned, you know, oh, about women, you know, working together on apps about menstrual cycles and all that. Actually, the fact that a lot of girls may look at technology and think that it doesn't apply to me. It's so boring. I've had so many girls tell me, oh, technology is so boring. But that's because they don't see the, re the connections between technology and their lives. So if you decide that you want to create an app all about menstrual cycles, why not? Because there is a need for <laughs> it, you know? Yes. Yeah, and I think that the more women get into this space, the more they will actually develop um, tools and technology that is very useful and relevant to women and you're, you're absolutely correct i personally use those apps that um we use to track menstrual cycles so yeah you know, so do i <laughs> <laughs> hey so if there weren't any women in the tech spaces who would be doing that for me i wouldn't keep track of this stuff but you know, exactly I, you know this is very um interesting that we're talking about women getting into technology to create things that tools that women need and I see really an increasing trend of women in tech events. Just go on um, Twitter and type in women in tech and there's so much, you know, yes. going on. But yes. is that really a solution to the problem? Is that really what we need in terms of, you know, getting women to stay and actually maybe the next Facebook or the next Twitter would be coming from a woman? Is, that, is, is this event what we need? Well, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a step and it's part of what we need. When I started my work with WTEC, um, a lot of people didn't really see what, the, you know, the point of our organization was. Number one, they didn't see that there was a gender gap in technology. And even if there was a gender gap, they didn't see why it was such a problem. But the fact that people are now recognizing that there is a gender gap and there is a problem, I think that's, you know, the first step, you know, in the right direction. I think that, you know, because women are in the minority, it really helps to have um, networks um, where you can get support from, where you can get advice from, um, because um, there might be ways that, you know, women work better than men. You know, for instance, you know, there's some research that has shown that, you know, men will talk about, you know, the things that they do, kind of like what a woman would see as bragging. But a woman <laughs> will not necessarily feel comfortable doing that. She'll just, you know, just get her head down and just do the work. And not to talk about it, thinking that the work will speak for itself, you know. But, um, you know, it's, I think it's quite obvious that you do need to, you know, draw attention to what you're doing. So I think that having events, you know, that are women-focused, you know, also helps to um, give women, you know, some of the skills that they need. Apart from the, the technical skills, it can also help to educate women about the other skills that they need you know, to do well, you know, in those careers and then let them know that they're not alone, that whatever challenges they're going through, you know, there are other women who are going through it. And I think it really helps. And then, like I said about the importance of having role models and mentors, you know, a lot of times when, you know, you have women getting together, you know, to form organizations or run events, you know, they also um, extend the um, invitations to young girls or sometimes they set up projects to target girls in high school, you know, middle school, and let them know that, hey, you know, do consider a career in computer science or computer engineering or, you know, technology in general, because there are women who are working in this field and we're doing great things. And, uh, and I have to agree with you because you, you, as um, many people might not know this, but WTech has got a technology camp that yes. organized for, for teenage girls. And yes. we had United for Kids Foundation had some girls be a part yes. of the program earlier this month and we got yes. excellent feedback and these are uh, even kids that we were worried that they're from low-income families so they might not really understand so yes. we just said well let's risk it this is the first time and yes. honestly the girls have come back 
they have written, they have called to say this is one of the best things that ever happened to them, learning to code. And yeah. I am hoping that this kind of things can continue. But before I let you go, I mm -hmm. want to talk about, you know, the challenge of doing this kind of thing in Africa. Africa, you know, we, we can't sugarcoat this. Doing any business, talk less, of, talk less of technology, is just challenging, point blank period. It's, yeah. it's, there's power outages, there's instability, there's, you know, you can hardly plan. But you seem to be going on, you know, for a couple of years now. And I don't see a lot of um, government policies that support tech innovation or advancement mm -hmm. in Africa. You know, all, out of 53 countries in the African Union, only 16 countries have any laws or regulations or guidelines related yeah. to modern biotechnology, for example. So how mm -hmm. are you able to function in an environment where government policies don't support, you know, what you're doing? Well, I think that, you know, that's the key to doing anything, especially if you're doing something that is new and different, is just, you know, persistence and determination and to stick at it. You know, like I mentioned, you know, when we started the organization, a lot of people didn't get it. They didn't understand why it was a problem. You know, people will say, why are you focusing on just girls? You know, if women are not in technology, then it must be because they don't want to. If they study computer science and they drop out, it must be because, you know, they're not interested, you know. Um, but now, um, I think for instance, with the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, um, declaring the last April, uh, Thursday of um, every April of April of every year as Girls International Girls and ICT Day, um, by doing that, they, rec they have recognized that there is a gender gap in the space of uh, information and communication technology. And what they encourage on that day is that governments, organizations, schools you know, interested people should do something to draw attention to the gender gap and to do something to help close that gender gap. So whether that's by holding some kind of event, seminar, workshop, you know, what have you. So this started, um, I believe, in um, 2012 or 13. Um, and um, so because of that, I think that has really um, drawn a lot of attention, you know, to this uh, technology gender gap. And the Nigerian government, you know, is, you know, now doing, you know, things, they're running initiatives to encourage more women and girls in the space of information technology. So, for instance, the Federal Ministry of uh, Communication Technology um, has set up, um, with, it's still in the pilot stage anyway, but has set up a series of uh, technology clubs for girls in secondary school, and we're actually working in partnership with them. Um, so, I mean, so the landscape is changing. The awareness is growing, which is good. But I think that, you know, really having people and organizations um, that have stayed in the space and, you know, kept pushing and raising the issues has really, really helped. So, yeah, I, it hasn't been easy, but just being focused and, you know, just staying on it. I think has just really helped. And I think you're doing an excellent job because I, I saw you when I was in Lagos and I didn't see too many gray hairs. In fact, <laughs> I don't think I saw any at all. So, I mean, you know, this is, this is something that you're doing very well. And I'm hoping that a lot of people who are listening to you or who will listen to you after this show will do something to support. And um, I want to give out your website and we'll send that out to uh, Twitter account as well. It's w-techonline.org, okay. right? I'm correct? Yes, that's right. That's yes. right. So please, I hope people will connect with you. And I hope that, you know, there will be more collaboration between WTech and this show in the future. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sokwe. Thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity. No, no, no worries. Thank you for joining us. And thank uh, Nigerian Technology for cooperating today. <laughs> we thank you. Yes. Ha have a good afternoon. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, I have Samuel Surafa with me in the studio. And we're going to be talking more about technology and Africa in general. Please don't go away. Support for Impact Africa comes from Our Financial Coach. Ranked among America's 11 best financial coaches on the web at ourfinancialcoach.com. United Four Kids Foundation committed to healing the world one child at a time. On the web at unitedforkidsfoundation.org. Frad Consulting, planning and designing services where you are always in good company. On the web at fradconsulting.com. And from Outside in HR, pointing great companies to the future of successful HR. On the web at 
outside in hrng.com. And from Wiser Advisory, Africa's leading financial advisory, training and outsourcing services firm on the web at wiseradvisory.com. And from Next Tier, the leading public sector advisory firm focused on agriculture, power, and petroleum on the web at nexttierlimited.com. And from Data Century Limited. And from Total Ascent, empowering individuals and organizations to achieve their educational and career goals on the web at total-ascent.com. And from Brave Little Heroes, helping kids discover their inner awesome on the web at bravelittleheroes.com. To support Impact Africa, please visit our website, impactafricaonline.com. You are listening to Impact Africa. To connect with the program, please call 1-443-499-2755. That's 1-443-499-2755. You may also send an email to info at impactafricaonline.com or tweet at uimpactafrica. Now, back to our show. You are listening to Impact Africa. To connect with the program, please call one. Welcome back to Impact Africa. And I promised that I had Samuel Swerfel, the founder of Mansa Collabs LLC, with me. Welcome, Samuel. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Very nice to see you here. And uh, Mansa Collabs is a for profit organization. It's for profit. It's for profit. I want to make not, sure I put that out or there. Or you could say not just for profit or <laughs> non loss. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, it's because I, I don't want people to think, okay, so we're doing something to develop technology in Africa, so sure. these guys are going to work pro bono now. No. Okay, fantastic. No. I, no. We just want to put that out there. Yeah. So, but I want to talk more about, you know, Africans and technology. And I want to start by um, saying that it looks like Africans are consuming technology, mm -hmm. no doubt. Mm -hmm. Just look at DRC, Nigeria, Nairobi. Mm -hmm. the, the technology consumption is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. in this. The, the data supports it, mm -hmm. especially mobile technology. Mm -hmm. But it looks like it's an entertainment, not like that's a bad thing, you mm -hmm. know, social media and mm -hmm. all these things. But how about important sectors like um, healthcare, mm -hmm. agriculture, something that produces um, some sort of income or sure. economic development, where are we sure. compared to this? Sure. Well, um, I think, you know, we're going through, uh, you know, on the continent, the various countries are going through sort of the, the, the technology um, ad adaptation um, phase like most other countries are. Um, in a sense, when everyone had access to Facebook, um, and for many reasons, I think, think the primary use, uh, like here, is for communication. So for the mobile telecom, it was able to gain uh, sort of a, a rapid usage, increase in usage, and, and it's still there because it served the communication need between people that really hit the spot, you know, mm -hmm. at a price point that was uh, reachable and also in terms of just being able to uh, access both the you know the the value of a, of a credit and also the phone itself, um, and so now as we move more from voice to data, and that's where like the the in entrance of something like Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, um, that you know recently sold for like nineteen billion dollars. Oh my you god! Know, we I wish that, that was my idea. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm man. telling you. I'm a, I'm gonna look through my napkins. <laughs> <laughs> and see which one I had that idea for a couple of years back. So, um, but, you know, and, and so you have that element coming. And despite that, though, there are emerging, um, actually, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but like right now there's over 100 uh, incubators or co-working spaces all over the continent. Um, and a good place to check that out, there's actually an umbrella organization for those called Afri Labs. Um, and, and in those spaces, there are... The, those individuals who have now come through the phase of using, um, have our understanding, are connected with what's happening all over the world in terms of technology creation, and are creating these next generation softwares and applications. In the agriculture and um, health sectors, I think you you find some projects like a lot of the health w uh, projects were driven through the donor, you know, type of community, NGO community. Um, but there are also others who've developed some very interesting um, software services and applications. Like in Ghana, there's a, an application called Impedigree, 
that uh, is able to verify, you know, the the authenticity of of someone like a drug that you get from the store because there's so much Fake. C- counterfeit yeah. drugs in yeah. that in that market, and so that's a that's a Ghanaian um, individual who runs that. In Kenya, there's M Farm um, that helps in terms of I think they're they're more about like uh, price and market price or something of that nature. So slowly you see sort of uh, folks kind you know developing applications for those sectors but then others as well but you see this, maybe i'm just an impatient consumer sure, or i'm sure. impatient uh, african sure. but this is my frustration somebody develops whatsapp sure. in san francisco or someplace wherever they did sure. that it's all over the continent in no time mm-hmm. but all of a sudden you know they, they have these apps in ghana mm-hmm. that nigerians could use mm-hmm. they this app in kenya that nigerians could use mm-hmm. because we also have the same challenges but I bet if I surveyed 100 Nigerians, they have never heard about it. Exactly. So why is Africa not talking to Africa? And that's a challenge. And I mean, that's why I'm in business. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's the point of my business is to, is to you know, essentially be able to bridge those types of gaps uh, between countries and then within the continent and then abroad also. Because, you know, I think in, in a few reports it's been said that uh, the next wave of, of global innovation that even we're able to benefit from here is probably going to be birthed on the continent. And, and you hear folks when? saying that in... You know, it's actually. When are you gonna do it? I, you know what? I'm my my main focus is to help other businesses. Okay. Um, but uh, you can see the first one being in Pesa, you know, from Kenya, which is born in Kenya um, and now actually starting to be launched in Europe. And so this is like the first major example within the technology world of something that was completely born within the continent now being able to be used uh, in other parts outside the continent. And what did you call that again? In PESA, it's the mobile Pesa. money transfer system. Fantastic. I think that's awesome. We need to see more of that. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I look at there's so many sure. African-specific problems. Sure. Sickle cell, malaria, sure. tuberculosis, uh, Ebola virus that is killing thousands in sure. West Africa right now. Sure. And we we don't have that um, infrastructure to share the technology yeah. or to share information. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's very frustrating. It's, I, I don't know, I'm just looking for a way out for yeah. Africans to do this. And you have partners yeah. in, um, in Accra. Yeah. You're building partnerships in Accra, yeah. in um, Nairobi, yeah. in Paris, and in New York. Yeah. What are some of the challenges that you see, you know, in terms of working in the continent compared to when you're working with partners in Paris or New York? I mean, uh, I think the most, uh, probably the, the, the most uh, salient or the tangible issue sometimes is just connectivity, so, you know, the downtime. <laughs> yeah. um, but in, in the, that's the beauty of sort of working in technology is actually sometimes you it doesn't matter where you are mm-hmm. um, in, in terms of, especially in terms of being up to date with all that's going around. It's just, it's a fa- very fast changing sector. Uh, so, you know, being, uh, being aware of what's happening on, everybody reads Mashable the same time. So, which yes. is like a leading blog uh, site for technology. Everybody is reading about the latest release from Microsoft or from yeah. Google. So in that sense, it's okay. I think what we're, and to your earlier point, um, there's still there are challenges, and and we are far far away from having sort of a fluid ecosystem to make sure that every great idea is able to kind of get to that next level. Yes, we we are quite distant from that realm, and that's why we sort of uh, are at the stage of still building out the ecosystems everywhere. So, for instance, Nairobi is very good in terms of where their ecosystem is, all the actors. But they still have challenges. Lagos is is like zooming ahead, but they're still getting their feet uh, together. And I guess slowly we'll we'll sort of be able to build that bigger. And I look forward to it. And you're right about uh, Lagos because I was in Nigeria late last month, early this month. Mm -hmm. And when you get to the computer village, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, you cannot recognize this place anymore. There is a ton of stuff happening. And I'm hoping that, you know, we can translate some of these mm. things across critical sectors, like culture, technology, sure. and things like that. But you're doing something, and that's where, before I let you go, sure. they, there's, um, there's something that you're doing that I find very fascinating. Mm. It's the digital business challenge, exactly. and your focus is on you know, innovative ideas in Kenya and Tanzania. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, um, so in, in the research that we were doing uh, with, with some of the leading, uh, I guess, 
organizations that work in this space. It mentioned that uh, one of the challenges uh, faced by these two ecosystems, and in general, for entrepreneurs, were at the pre-seed or the very early stage of their business um, uh, for them to be able to establish themselves, get the resources, recognition, a lot of the things that we were just talking about, actually. Um, and so what we thought was, you know, our main business is really around advisory, being able to match um, an, an SME or a startup to the skills that they need to sort of grow. And so, but before then, we need to find who they are. Yes. Uh, so that was another uh, reason. So we decided to sort of uh, launch this digital business challenge to, in, in three areas specifically, uh, folks that are making digital businesses that relate to business to business applications, sort of things that help other businesses run better. Uh, ed tech, which is kind of to your point, education, technology, yes. applications, and services, and then entertainment. Um, and for instance, I consider right now a lot of what's going on, even with Nollywood, is to be to be related to technology. For me, I use the broad sense of the word technology and media, yes. because you know, every, like Iroko TV, purely yes, yes, online. I mean, yes. they're you know, they're about to open up an office in New York. Wow, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Yes. So the point for us is to to basically identify some of these leading edge young entrepreneurs that are working in that and then plug them into resources locally like co-working spaces, uh, access to advisory services that we can provide, further training, other sort of resources, and get them at least a little bit ahead to the next stage so that they can get more attention from investors or, or just grow their firm. And that is exactly what many of these businesses need. Yeah. Because just the opportunity to, to be seen, for people to see that great idea that you have, is what people don't have. How many CNN tech voices would capture those local businesses in Lagos or in Nairobi or in Tanzania? So I think this is awesome. Mm -hmm. So how can I apply i don't have any ideas okay but just in case i did sure what, sure how will i apply right so the best thing to do now is to, to keep watch on uh www.mansacolabs.com m-a-n-s-a-c-o-l-a-b-s.com uh and from there we'll have a link to the first round there's two rounds one is where you just submit your general information and have the public vote so you get public voting and then awesome. afterwards we have a, a judge round as well wow that's 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 really fantastic and that leads me to this um, week's uh, edition of Afrochunities. And Afrochunities, as you know, is sponsored by the African DevJobs.com. Yeah. I keep saying it, we can't complain that only expatriates, foreigners go to Africa to take our jobs. If we want to take any African jobs and we feel we have the skills, go to AfricanDevJobs.com and submit your resumes um, online, it's free. But they're always providing us with opportunities to connect Africans to opportunities in the continent. And this week's opportunity is the Zambezi Prize, which raises awareness of entrepreneurship and financial inclusion and encourages the flow of capital to ventures in the continent. The prize is open to a wide spectrum of financial inclusion ventures, demonstrating innovation and potential for impact. Mm. So that really, you know, uh, connects to what you are doing. Yeah. The Zambezi Prize awards $200,000 annually to support ventures that contribute to financial inclusion in sub-Saharan Africa. $200,000. <laughs> you know what? I, I think might. I'm getting there before you. <laughs> the deadline to apply is yeah. November 15, okay. 2014. So there's enough time to apply. Yeah. More information at zambezi.mit.edu. That's Z A M B E Z I dot M I T dot E D U. And we would also tweet it as well. So thank you very much, African Dev Jobs dot com. And I will be applying for this one. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're still watching and listening to Impact Africa. And I'm going to make Samuel stay around for the um, Africa 101. Let's see how much he knows. So please don't go away. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been on Wikipedia. <laughs> Our financial coach. Ranked among America's 11 best financial coaches on the web at ourfinancialcoach.com. United Four Kids Foundation, committed to healing the world one child at a time. On the web at unitedforkidsfoundation.org. Frad Consulting, planning and designing services where you are always in good company. On the web at fradconsulting.com. And from Outside in HR. Pointing great companies to the future of successful HR on the web at outsideinhrng.com. And from Wiser Advisory, 
Africa's leading financial advisory, training and outsourcing services firm on the web at wiseradvisory.com. And from Nextier, the leading public sector advisory firm focused on agriculture, power, and petroleum on the web at nextierlimited.com. And from Data Century Limited. And from Total Ascent, empowering individuals and organizations to achieve their educational and career goals on the web at total-ascent.com. And from Brave Little Heroes, helping kids discover their inner awesome on the web at bravelittleheroes.com. To support Impact Africa, please visit our website, impactafricaonline.com. Get ready to be inspired by the people, stories, and opportunities in Africa, where a global community of Africans and friends of Africa with no boundaries. Together, we celebrate the continent's successes and help provide solutions to some of its greatest challenges. Impact Africa airs live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. GMT at listenvisionlive.com. You can also catch previous episodes on iTunes and on the show's website, impactafricaonline.com. Connect with Impact Africa on Twitter and Facebook at UImpactAfrica. Together, we'll discover that the real Africa is full of amazing talents and great opportunities. You are listening to Impact Africa. To connect with the program, please call 1-443-499-2755. That's 1-443-499-2755. You may also send an email to info at impactafricaonline.com or tweet at uimpactafrica. Now, back to our show. The Africa 101 segment is sponsored by The African Memory Game, available online at theafricamemorygame.com. You are listening to Impact Africa. To connect with the program, please call 1-443-499-2755. That's 1-443-499-2755. You may also send an email to info at impactafricaonline.com. Support for Impact Africa comes from our financial coach, ranked among America's 11 best financial coaches on the web at ourfinancialcoach.com. United Four Kids Foundation, committed to healing the world one child at a time. On the web at unitedforkidsfoundation.org. Frad Consulting, planning and designing services where you are always in good company. On the web at fradconsulting.com. And from Outside in HR. Pointing great companies to the future of successful HR on the web at outsideinhrng.com. And from Wiser Advisory, Africa's leading financial advisory, training and outsourcing services firm on the web at wiseradvisory.com. And from Nextier, the leading public sector advisory firm focused on agriculture, power, and petroleum on the web at nextyearlimited.com and from Data Century Limited and from Total Ascent, empowering individuals and organizations to achieve their educational and career goals on the web at total-ascent.com and from Brave Little Heroes, helping kids discover their inner awesome on the web at bravelittleheroes.com. To support Impact Africa, please visit our website, impactafricaonline.com. Welcome back to Impact Africa, and today is the semi-final, the second semi-final, actually, of the Africa 101 quiz. The top two contestants today will go on to the final next week, um, next week Sunday. So on the call right now, I have Miss Isaac, Miss Desire, and Miss Latifa. Can you all hear me? Yeah. yeah. Hi, oh, okay. Isaac can. So I'm going to start with Miss Isaac. And you don't get to pick your questions this week. Everything is oh. in order. So you just okay. take what you get. And you have 20 okay. seconds to pick an option. <laughs> the first option okay. you pick is your final answer. 
So, okay. let's see how much you know about Africa since you were here before. Yeah. I expect that you know more now. So, Miss Isaac, <laughs> Eritrea yeah. became independent from Ethiopia in what year? A, 1993, B, 1960. <laughs> you don't know the answer, do you? I'll say 1960. Uh, 1960 is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still have another chance. Miss Desayo, the winner of the August 10 competition. She's the freshest winner we have here. So let's see. What was the official language in Ethiopia? Or what is the official language in Ethiopia? A, Swahili. B, Amharic. I'll go for B. You go for B. And there's, yeah. there's, there's somebody who would have even helped you out here. You're correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You should, be, you should be in this competition, actually, somewhere. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to mess with people's <laughs> chances. Because I might demolish. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh, my God. So now there's pressure on Latifa. What is the capital of Injibuti? A, Ambuli. B, Injibuti. Injibuti. Oh, you're correct. So let's ah, go. Thank you. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Honestly, this is my favorite part of the show. It's fun. <laughs> so, Miss Isaac, what is the capital of Burundi? A. Bujumbura. B. Bilabo. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> this is. You got this one. <laughs> well. I love Papi. Start. What's the answer? B. Uh, B is wrong. Uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> what? What is wrong with you? You're so mean. Sorry, sorry. You should be in this competition. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you a question. Give me a question. Yeah. So I'm you, ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Coming next. So, Miss Desayo, you have a chance to get in the lead yeah. here. The Maasai. The ethnic nomadic people are from which country? A. Chad. B. Kenya. Chad. Wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to disclose the nationalities of anybody on this call today because that might give them away as to why, you know, they're guessing these answers wrong. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Latifa, you have a chance to win this right now. And um, hmm. can wow. I answer one of the other questions? Sorry, <laughs> I said I hope I get the. Anyway, go on. <laughs> which country is larger in area? Eritrea. What? What? Which country is larger in area? Eritrea okay. or Ghana? Ghana? Correct. Uh, that was a tough one. Ooh! That was a tough one. <laughs> yes. That was a tough one. <laughs> because even I didn't know it because I felt like Ghana is small. So That's tough. It is. But you know what? You're doing good. Miss Latifa is in the lead right now. Uh, Yay! <laughs> let's see if she can hold on to that lead. So let's go to Miss Isaac. Yep. Africa is famous for its game reserves. Think about it. You're in America. Everybody keeps asking you, have you ever seen <laughs> sheep, deer, everything? They keep asking you like you live in the middle of animals. Where is the Amboseli Game Reserve located? A, Kenya. B, Uganda. Oh, Do you even know that? I said Kenya. You go with Kenya, and that is correct. Yeah. So Yay! <laughs> so now she might still win this. All right. Ladies. All right. I wouldn't be comfortable yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> now, this question has been asked before on this show, Miss Desire. So maybe okay. you listened, maybe not. Which African nation did Winston Churchill once call the Pearl of Africa? A, Uganda. B. Botswana. Uganda. And that is correct. All right. All right. Wow. Yeah. You're not playing around at all. You know what? I think I think Miss Desayo 
and Miss Latifa might have a little um, geographical edge here. Okay. They both went to Howard. Okay. And you know this studio is in front of Howard University. <laughs> So well, you know, sure. there they might be some, you know, good vibes. yeah, there might be. Some, thank you, some good vibes. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's okay. see. Okay, so Miss Latifa, what was the previous name of the Republic of Malawi? A. Nyasa Land Protectorate. B. Azania. Uh, I'll say B because it's near Tanzania. And that is wrong. Hapana. Yay, I'm out. Am I out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, even I didn't know that. I had to go and Google and I was like, no, what is that? What is Nyasa something something? But that's the former name. Okay. So okay. Now we're going to the last round of questions. As we stand right now, Miss Isaac has one point. Miss Desire has two points. Miss Latifa has two points. Last round of questions. Hmm. Anybody can win this right now. Mm. Anybody. So, Miss Isaac, who was the yep. founder of medieval empire of Mali, also known as the Lion of Mali? A. Sundiata Keita. B. Amadou Toure. I'll go for B. And that is wrong. Mm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, the Lion of Mali is Sundiata Keita. So, Miss Desire and Miss Latifa, this competition is now open to both of you. Miss Desire, the historic city of Timbuktu, the commercial city that handled trans-Saharan business in the past, is in which country? A, Mali, B, Zimbabwe. Hmm. Zimbabwe? And that is wrong. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> that is wrong. I see something interesting is about to happen here. It's wrong. Because I said at the beginning that the top two winners mm -hmm. are going on to the final. Okay. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see what's going to happen with Miss Latifa with the final question. What was the capital of the Ashanti Empire? A, Kumasi. B, Accra. This is not a fair question. It's not a fair question. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the Ashanti tribe is in Ghana, so. Uh, <laughs> well, I go into the final, so I have nothing to lose. I'll say Kumashi. <laughs> you know what? You guessed the answer right, but you missed the, the time. Oh. It, oh really? Oh. Yeah. You know the the bell just rang when you said Kumasi. Now we have a problem. Everybody has two oh. points each. Okay. And we're looking for the first two winners. You know this happened when I was in Nigeria, and Ibuku would text me and say, "We have a tie. How do we break it?" <laughs> so now oh. I kind of got prepared for this. Mm. So we're going to have one more round, and. A very easy round to see if we can get a winner. So, um, Miss Isaac, which is your favorite region in Africa? North, West, East? Which one? West. <laughs> no. <laughs> no telling where you know where which region you're from. West. You don't want to venture someplace else. Okay. So let's see. Which of the following is not one of the large rivers in West Africa? Which of the following isn't? River Niger, River Senegal, River Nile. River Nile. And that is correct. Ladies. Yay! <laughs> right now, it looks like Miss Isaac might have a place in the final. Miss Desire, which is your favorite part of Africa? Uh, I just go for West. Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is wrong with these West Africans? Okay, <laughs> which country in Africa has the largest production of coffee and cocoa? A, Ivory Coast. B, Liberia. Ivory Coast. Oh my God, we have a problem. 
That is correct. <laughs> okay, we might have to draw lots to get a winner here. Miss Latifa, which yes, region is your favorite? Africa. In Africa. <laughs> which, which, which part of Africa, well, Africa is your favorite? Uh, um, I like North Africa. You like North Africa? Ooh, Whoa. Yes. That is somebody who likes a challenge. Yeah, Let's go there. Mm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Let's see. What's my first question in North Africa? <sighs> Let's see. I'm going to my North African region. Even I am panicking now. But I have to say this <laughs> might be an act of sabotage because Miss uh, Latifa told me she doesn't want to be in the finals because the question is too hard. I'm actually in the middle of a run right now, so <laughs> I'm walking so that I can talk to you. <laughs> so, Miss Latifa, which country is the largest of these two in Africa, Egypt or Tunisia? Tunisia. And that is wrong. Yay! <laughs> 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 Oh my goodness. Well, well. so now we have Miss Isaac and Miss Desayo competing with Mr. K and Miss Vienna next week Sunday. It's going Yay, to be good tough. luck, ladies. It's going to be really Oh, wow. Tough. You're going to get... Um, <laughs> and you're going to get an email from, uh, from us this week, but it's not going to be multiple choice, so get ready. Oh, well, wow. I thank everybody for participating. <laughs> <laughs> in Impact Africa, I hope those who participated and those who listened uh, gained something from this. And I hope that um, the the reason why we're doing this is to get all of us engaged and to know the continent. I hope this will spur us to do that. And if you like these quizzes, please go to the AfricanMemoryGame.com and buy yourself one of these quizzes. I took some to Nigeria with me last month, and they were a great hit. Mm. Even among kids, like seven-year-olds, they were playing it. They were really excited. I think we need to know our continent and we need to define our own history. So thank you very much for, um, for being on the show today. And um, I want to make sure that before I let Samuel go, yes. I would know what he knows yes. about Africa. Let's try it. So let's, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm an expert, but... You know see. what? Let's see. Let's see how Let me get some of the Howard vibes on me, too. <laughs> you? So you've got two questions. Okay, I'm ask you. okay. Which African country was never colonized? Uh, is there an ABC? No, what is wrong no, with you? No, that's Ethiopia. <laughs> that's Ethiopia, yeah, correct. Yeah. You know what? I shouldn't ask you that. Actually, there's supposed to be where well, there's so two, supposed to be Liberia. Yeah. yeah but, you know, Liberia is a country that was formed. Sure, sure, sure. So sure, sure, it, essentially, it's. Uh, but no, that's not a question for you. Okay. You know that. <laughs> you, you're from that region. Yeah. Pick so, a West Africa one. You know what? That's where we're going Pick now. Pick a West Africa question. Okay. In which year? A did, w year? Yes. Did Ghana get its independence? Okay, it's uh wait a minute. Let me let me let me let me knock this out cuz it's I want to say they celebrated their 50th. Yes. I think last year, right? I'm so, not saying anything. 1963? <laughs> no. <Or> <laughs> no, 19, I, you only have one chance. No. You what is it? it? 1957. 57. 1957. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> With no multiple choice? <laughs> no, no multiple choice okay. if you're here. Okay. Okay, give me one more. Give me one more. One more. I got to redeem myself. Okay. All right. What was the first name of Benin, the West African country oh. Benin? You are giving me the... <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I know that one. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, you know what? I'll give you options for this one. Hold on. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. You Dahome, can ask me that. Huh? Dahomey or Port Nova? Uh, I'm trying to was, help you. Yeah, yes, yes. Was it Dahomey? Correct. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Thank you so much for thank playing. You. And thank, thank you. you, everybody, for watching, for listening. And we'll upload this on YouTube and on our Facebook page and on our website, impactafricaonline.com. So until next week when we meet again, please keep on impacting Africa. I want to thank DJ Mike Phillips. I want to thank Ibuku and Ibuku's brother who is in the studio today. Thank you so much for, for being here and giving us moral support. And I want to thank my guests, Aurel Lua and Samuel. And I want to thank everybody who is doing something to impact Africa. See you next week. God bless. For tuning in to Impact Africa. 
Please join us again next Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. GMT at listenvisionlive.com. Have a good week and keep impacting Africa. Get ready to be inspired by the people, stories, and opportunities in Africa. We're a global community of Africans and friends of Africa with no boundaries. Together, we celebrate the continent's successes and help provide solutions to some of its greatest challenges. Impact Africa airs live every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. GMT at listenvisionlive.com. You can also catch previous episodes on iTunes and on the show's website, impactafricaonline.com. Connect with Impact Africa on Twitter and Facebook at UImpactAfrica. Together, we'll discover that the real Africa is full of amazing talents and great opportunities.